And how is it part of your title has to do with events? How, I mean, how does that, how has that changed? You just don't do events at all at this point or? Yeah, we, we, uh, 2020 was none. Uh, Things kept, that we had planned for the, yeah, early part of the year, got Mm -hmm. delayed to later in the year or didn't uh, end up happening. Mm -hmm. Um, But we did plan one event that was our own Mm -hmm. and that was an art show that we held in our uh, warehouse facility. Mm-hmm. Uh, we cleared out you know, everything and turned it into an art gallery. Nice. Um, kept it COVID safe with just limiting it to uh, 25 people per showing. We did three showings. Mm-hmm. Um, our facility was it's like over 3,000 square feet. So plenty of space for people to be spread around. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was really our biggest event of the year. And it was very successful. We sold out. Mm-hmm. Um, of all the tickets, uh, we a lot of the artists we work with um, had pieces there or, mm-hmm. or showed up to support. Mm-hmm. And that was uh, that was all the artists fun. kept their money. We didn't take yeah. anything from sales. So like one artist, she sold seven hundred dollars worth of prints in one hour. Mm-hmm. So it was yeah. like a really great experience. And the curator of the event, um, who we worked with uh, hand in hand. He also designed mugs for us that you can see on our website that we sell. I have seen those. Those are really nice. Yeah. To make sure that we're providing a platform for them because mm-hmm. they help our brand so much. Yeah. Um, and then as other events coming into 2021, something where um, we've done a soft launch, but we're going to be evolving it more in the next month are mm-hmm. uh, cuppings. So virtual cuppings where my father will uh, will send out packages that have coffee mm-hmm. um, and did cupping spoons which are specific to the cupping process and, and mm-hmm. cupping bowls mm-hmm. um, those will be uh, distributed out and then um, virtual whether it's zoom or another program mm-hmm. uh, my father will go over um, how we cup coffees um, mm-hmm. how professionals do a cupping and why we choose that process then talking about more about our coffees that they are tasting and why we chose those specific coffees to go on in blends mm-hmm. and the different nuances between like different origins, different roast styles. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So really a coffee education. Well, I almost, I probably should have given you 20 bucks for setting me up like that because oh, uh, yeah, here, awesome. here's our, uh, unfortunately my green screen is a little wonky. So you'll see <laughs> some ghosting going on, but uh, we've got uh, some Franklin Reserve. We've got some uh, Costa Rica Taratsu. Cool. Yes. And um, we also have some Schuylkill Select, obviously. Our neck of the woods, Schuylkill, very important. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, that is our next uh, uh, video is going to be with Obel Sr. Uh, and we're going to try and follow along a couple of coffee novices uh, in that regard as far as tasting and so forth and, and see if we can actually... Uh, get it down to a point where we can, you know, pretend to know what the hell we're talking about. So you, you will. He helps. He yeah. he speaks like a regular person. He doesn't speak like, you know, here's thirty years of coffee knowledge in thirty minutes for you. Good luck mm-hmm. understanding what these words mean. Like, <laughs> right. like he'll, he'll and he'll be real about things. He'll be like, look, like everyone says that this matters. It doesn't really matter, you know, or he'll say, like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. this is really what you want to be looking for. Like, don't worry about all the fluff that surrounds, you know, the tasting notes. This is what you want to be tasting. So mm-hmm. I, I like sitting through his session because I feel like I'm learning something from a guy. I don't feel like I'm in a classroom with a professor in a good mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, the other thing I was interested to hear more about is... Natalie had mentioned that he makes coffee with just hot water, a single cup and a spoon. Mm-hmm. And two he says, spoons. it's not uh, two spoons. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's not like America where you need to make a whole pot. So she yeah, seemed yeah. to intimate that there's a cultural difference there. Honduras, Colombia, I believe is what she said. Uh, the different culture than uh, the American way of making a full pot. So I'm yeah. curious to dig into that a little bit more as well. Mm-hmm. And we'll still hear new things that we've never heard before. So like a lot of people in Brazil will like to brew it in what's called a coffee sock, which is just like a sleeve of fabric that they let it sit in in water. And in Guatemala, we find that it's like traditional older people would just throw all the coffee in a clay pot and put a screen filter on the end as it poured out. 
So mm-hmm. we're even finding like more and more that there's just so many like odd traditional methods of brewing coffee from country to country. My grandma mm-hmm. used to use the sock. Use the sock, yeah. The sock, wow. Brown yeah. sock strainer. Yeah. <laughs> as long as you get the buzz, I guess that's really what the yeah. important part is. Yeah. Um, well, I, I thank you both for being here. We definitely appreciate your time. Uh, this has been very enlightening, and I always love it when interview subjects make it easy for me. You guys threw in a lot of extra detail and great insight, so I'm really thankful for that. We're just happy that you're local to us. You know, we've been living in Philly a long time, and just mm-hmm. how easy it was to get you coffee, hop on this call. It's, it was really nice.